Hi, I'm Michael Correa, and this is Psych Exam Review. And in this video, I'm going to talk about descriptive statistics. And these are statistics that simply describe the data that we've collected. And we're going to look at three measures of central tendency. These are three different types of statistics that tell us about the central tendency of our data. And the first of these you're probably familiar with, and that is the mean, or the average. And so the mean is calculated by adding up all of our scores, that's the sum of scores, divided by the number of scores. And you've probably calculated an average before, but let's look at an example. Let's say that I give 10 students a test, and 9 of those students earn a 90 on the test, and one student earns a 0 on the test. Well, let's find the average. So I'm going to have 90 plus 90 plus 90 plus 90 plus 90, 9 times plus 0. So that's going to give me 810. And then I'm going to divide by the total number of students, which is 10 students. And so we can see in this case the average is going to be 81. And now you can see the problem with using the mean. And the problem here is that it's very sensitive to this 0. This 0 has a very strong effect. You know, until that was there, you know, the average would would have been you know, 90, and then one zero brings it all the way down to 81. And so what's going to happen is if I tell the students when I give their test back, say the average score was 81, then I have nine students who think they did better than the average, when in fact each of them only did better than one other student. So the problem with the mean is that it's sensitive. And it's sensitive to extreme scores. So when we have a very high or a very low score, the mean is going to be affected very strongly. And this is especially true if we have a small sample size. Right? So because I only had 10 students, this effect was very noticeable. If I had 1,000 students and one student got a zero, then it wouldn't affect the mean very much. But because we had such a small sample of only 10 students, it had a very strong effect. So another measure of central tendency that doesn't have this problem is the median. And the median is simply the middle score. So to find the median, all we have to do is we line up our data in order. We put each score in order, and then we just find which one is right in the middle. So imagine I gave people uh, some sort of test, and, and, and they had some number as their score, so let's say 2, 4, 5, uh, 7, 8. So let's say these are the scores that we're looking at in these five people, and what we do is we line them up and then we just look which score is in the middle of this list, and it's 5. So in this case the median would be 5. And we can see that here it's not so sensitive to extreme scores because I can go ahead and change one of these scores. I can say, imagine instead of 8, what if the highest score was all the way up at 80? Totally far away from these other scores. Well, in that case, the median would still be 5. It wouldn't be influenced by the fact that this score was extremely high. Now you might be wondering, how do I find the median if I have something like this? Let's say 2, 4, 5, and let's throw in another score, 6. Okay, so what, what if this is my distribution of scores? You might look and say, well, what do I do? Five and six are both in the middle. You know, I have an even number of scores, so there is no middle. And all you do in that case is you add the two middle scores, so that would be five plus six, and you divide by two. You take the average of these two, and so in that case, our median would be 5.5. Okay, so that's the median. It's much less sensitive to extreme scores. Again, I could go in and change this to 80 here, and this wouldn't change at all. And the last measure of central tendency that we'll look at is the mode. And the mode is the most frequent score. And so to find the mode, all we do is we look at all of the scores and we count how many times did each score occur. So if we go back to our first example, we see, okay, 90 occurred 9 times, and 0 occurred 1 time. And so 90 was the most frequently occurring score, and so 90 would be the mode. Now, you might ask, well, what do I do if, if I have more than one most frequent score? And that's possible, and we call that a multi-modal 
distribution. And so, for instance, if I had 10 students take an exam and five of them scored 90 and five of them scored 84, then when I calculate the mode, I'd say the mode is 90 and the mode is also 84. So you can have more than one mode. And you might also ask, well, what do I do if none of the scores is most frequent? What if I look and each score occurred only one time? Like in this example here, you might say, what's, you know, 2, 4, 5, 7, 80, what's the mode? In this case, in this case, all of them are the mode. Or you could say none of them are the mode. And the way of saying that is saying it's a uniform distribution. And that just means that each score was equally frequent. So in that case, all of the scores occurred once, so it's a uniform distribution. And if, if each of the scores had occurred twice, it would still be called a uniform distribution. So those are the three measures of central tendency. I hope you found this helpful. If so, please like the video and subscribe to the channel for more. Thanks for watching.